This video is sponsored by Squarespace. Literally, fire. Like this one up here. This one's a bit of a, uh, a slow burn. Cool, right? These are burn or fire transitions and they exist in your version of DaVinci Resolve 18. They're customizable and they're loads of fun to mess about with. Plus, they're not the only fun customizable transitions that you probably missed. There's this really solid glitch transition, this sweet customizable dissolve transition, or how's about a good old fashioned whip transition. Now these are all available in the free version of DaVinci Resolve 18 and they've been there all along. You probably just missed them. So let's take a look. But first of all, I want to run you through some of the basics. We're going to be working on the edit page, so make sure you're on there. To open up your video transitions, simply click on effects, top left hand corner, open up the toolbox, go to video transitions, and then everything is within this list on here. To apply a transition, you simply give it a click, drag it and put it on your edit point like so. Give it a click, open the inspector, top right hand corner, then go to transition and we've got all of the transitions options within here. If you've customized any transition and you want to save it, you can do. Simply right click on the transition on the timeline and then go to create transition preset. Give it a name, so I'm going to leave that as that. Click on OK. And then within your video transitions area, you'll now have a user area and we've got all of our user presets within here. So now if I grab that additive dissolve, pop it on there like so. Right, the basics out the way, let's hop back into the edit page and have some fun. Starting off with the glitch transition. So we're on the edit page, I'm gonna open up the effects library, video transitions, and I've got all my transitions within here. We're gonna scroll past all the standard ones and we're down in the fusion transitions. Now confusingly, there is actually a glitch transition within here, but I don't really like it. It's kind of funky, doesn't really do what I want it to do. So we're actually gonna skip that and there's a better one. Near the top, there's this one here called Camera Shake. So we're gonna grab that, drop that on this edit point like so. Now if we give it a play, it shakes like this. But if you look closely, there's actually a bit of an RGB sort of glitch effect going on. You can see bits of reds and greens and that sort of thing. And that's what we're gonna use for our glitch transition. So give it a click, Inspector, we've got all of the controls within here. Now what I like to do, you've got this shake strength. At the moment, it's shaking far too much. I don't want it to shake quite that much. So I'm going to knock this down to about 0.1. And now we've got this much simpler sort of shake transition. And we can see the RGB effects much more clearly. Now this type of transition works best when you make it quite short. So we're going to really shorten this down so it's nice and quick. Something like so. Now still within the inspector, there's some more controls. So we've got motion blur if we want to add it. There's not actually that much motion within this transition. So it's not really required but you can put it up if you want to, just by increasing the quality and increasing the shutter angle will give you just that little bit of motion blur. Scroll down, the main three we wanna have a look at, contrast, brightness, and saturation. So contrast is obviously the contrast. This is a glitch transition, so we don't really want it to be subtle. We're not going for subtlety, we're doing a glitch. So I'm gonna knock up the contrast. We're gonna give it a boost on the brightness and maybe just a smidge on the saturation. And then if we hit play, We've got this quite nice, simple, easy looking glitch transition. Throw a sound effect on there and job done. Boom, glitch transition done. It's not the best, but it's not bad and it's really easy to set up. So why not have a play with it? Next up, we've got circles. Now this one, again, isn't the most exciting. It's not that customizable, but it's really, really handy if you're doing any sort of branding. If you're using brand colors, you can create this transition to match your brand colors and it does actually work quite well. So let's have a look at circles. Circles is just underneath the camera shake. So we're going to give it a click and drop it on here like so. Same place, inspector, we've got the options within here. We've simply got the circle color, the thickness, and then the motion blur. So the thickness obviously controls the thickness of this little border. We can add motion blur if we want to. I actually don't like the motion blur on this one. I prefer to leave it off. And then we've got the color. So if I click on this circle color, I get my color picker. I can change it to whatever color I want. Let's go with the orange that I like to use. Click on OK, and we can just make this transition max our branding or our brand colors or whatever really quickly and easily. Foreground wipe. Not the most exciting, a little bit more corporate, but does work well if you're transitioning between a talking head and then some gameplay or some screen recording like I do. I actually use this one quite a lot in my video tutorials. So let's take a look. This one's a little bit further down. There are some more here. We've got drop warps and crash zooms, but I'm not a big fan of those. So we're going to keep going down until we get to our foreground wipe. Give it a click, drop it on there, hit play, and we've just got this nice, simple little foreground wipe transition. Give it a click. You haven't got many options within here. 
By default, it goes to left to right. We can make it go right to left by simply ticking the invert wipe button and it'll just wipe the other way. We've got a shadow softener, so we can just reduce that shadow, the little drop shadow, if we want to, just by messing with that. And then we can also change the width of our sort of foreground wipe. It does actually look quite good if you set it all the way up to one, and then you get this sort of full screen wipe effect as well, which can work really well. There you go, foreground wipe, simple one. And now a real quick message from this video's sponsor, Squarespace. If you're a video editor or a content creator of any kind like I am, then you're probably going to need a website. And that's where Squarespace comes in. Squarespace allows you to create an awesome, professional looking website in no time at all. They've got a bunch of really nice looking templates which you can just pick from and then customize until your website is looking exactly as you want it. Plus, there's a bunch of built in tools like analytics, you know us YouTubers love analytics, SEO tools, online stores, email marketing, members areas, blogs, and now even scheduling tools, meaning you've got everything you could possibly need in one place. If you fancy checking out Squarespace for yourself, simply head over to squarespace.com right now to start your free trial. When you're ready to launch, head over to squarespace.com forward slash Mr. Alex Tech to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or a domain using code Mr. Alex Tech at checkout. Simple. Now we're going to start having some real fun and have a look at these funky customizable ones. And we're going to start off with something called the Noise Dissolve. It's really easy to miss because it doesn't look that exciting, but there's actually loads of customizable options for this one. So you can do loads of funky stuff with it. Scroll down until you get this really unassuming Noise Dissolve transition. Drop it on there, give it a click. Now within the inspector, the first thing you'll notice is you've got these versions at the top. We've got one to six. So by default, we're on version one, and that just gives us this sort of dissolve effect like so. But if we click on number two, we've now got this weird effect. Number three gives us this wavy sort of effect. Number four gives us this sort of electric one, which I really like. And then we've got number five, which is a sort of clock wipe effect. So you can pick on any of these as your sort of starting place. So let's just go with number four. And then we've got all of our controls within here. Now mix you leave as it is, that's just basically the zero to one, the actual transition itself. But then everything underneath there you can customize. So we've got type and we've got uni, linear, reflect, square, cross, radial and angle. So let's just pick on one, I'm gonna go linear. And if we hit play, we've just got this linear transition. We've then also got the softness, so we can change the softness of this edge. And then we can also increase the animation. This increases the jitteriness of the edge. So how much is going on with this sort of cloud style noise effect. We've also got an additional tab here for noise. So we can go in here and we can actually change and mess around with all the settings of this noise. We can make it discontinuous and inverted. I generally leave this as it is because I'm not actually too fussed about the randomness of the noise. So I'm gonna go back to controls. Now at the moment, this one is just whipping over from right to left, but we can control this. Underneath your preview window, click on your little drop down, and then you wanna to go to your fusion overlay. And now you see that we've got this little green bar on screen. And this is our start and end points for our noise dissolve. So we can just grab these and move them around. If we want it to be a harsh edge, we can bring them close together. We can spread them out. We can make it go diagonal across the screen or, or up or down. We can move them around, hit play, and there we go. So you can just customize this to get it looking however you want it. If we change the type to, let's go with something else like cross. We now have a cross one, but we can move this get these points exactly where we want them. So now we've got this weird transition and it's gonna pop open like so. Not a perfect transition for every situation, but it's loads of fun to mess with. You can customize it and actually do some really cool stuff. So just open it up, have a play, create some presets, and then you're good to go. So why not? Next up, we've got the paint on transition. This one isn't that customizable, but I really like it, so I figured it's worth mentioning. It's particularly good if you've got an arts and craft YouTube channel, for example. This one will probably become one of your favorite transitions. So let's have a real quick look. Right underneath noise dissolve, we've got paint on. We're gonna drop that on there, hit play, and we've got this simple paint over effect as it reveals the new clip on the timeline. In the inspector, there isn't that many options. You can change the shadow blend just by removing the drop shadow and you can add motion blur if you want to. Again, I don't think motion blur particularly works on this one, so I tend to leave it off. One tip I will say for this paint on, I think it works much better if you make it almost excessively long and really make a point of the fact that it's a paint on transition rather than it being a really quick snappy one. If you put it over a title, you can get it to reveal a title, which does work well. There's loads of fun uses for this paint 
on transition. Whip transitions. I've actually made a free preset, which is linked down below if you want some other whip transitions, but there are some quite good ones built into DaVinci Resolve. You do need to customize them to make them look really worthwhile, but once you do, they're not half bad. So let me show you those. Now there's quite a few of these. So we've got pans, these work in the same way, and we scroll down, we've got these slides. So we've got slide down, left, right, and up. So I'm just gonna go with slide right, and we'll put it on here, give it a click, hit play, and we've just got this transition. Now it doesn't look great by default, but with a few quick changes, we can make it look much, much better. Now this one, again, I do like to be really short, I like to be really quick and snappy, so we're gonna make this transition nice and short. And then within the inspector, all you wanna do, put motion blur on and put it right up, because this just looks much better with a decent amount of motion blur, that looks better already. And then within these curves, you've got ins and outs, change cubic to expo for both, hit play, and that gives us a much nicer looking whip transition. Drop a sound effect on there and job done. Now changing cubic to expo, all that does is speeds up the acceleration curve within the transition itself. But if you don't like the way expo looks, just click the little drop downs, have a play with some of them. There's some quite fun options in there. Just mess around with the two different boxes, change them to the different curves and see which one works best for you. Right, last but not least, the reason you're all here, the name of this video, we've got the burn away transition. Now the burn away transition is a little bit different because it's down here in the Resolve FX transitions area rather than in the Fusion transitions area. So we're gonna grab burn away and we're just gonna drop it on our edit point like so, hit play, and now we've got this simple burn transition which honestly, straight out of the box, I think looks kind of cool. Needs a sound effect to really sell the effect, but it does work well. Give it a click, we've got all the options within here. You can basically ignore this top set because everything kind of works as it is. Scroll down and you've got these effects burn away and then you've got all of your options within here. Now, much like the other one, we can control this on our preview window, but we have to just change one quick setting. So underneath your preview window, click the little drop down and then go to open effects overlay and then you'll get this appearing on screen. So at the moment we're set to motion and our angle is 25. Now we can just adjust that angle using a slider like so, but if you prefer you can use your mouse, click on the little circle and just rotate this around to change the direction of your burn transition to get it going in whatever direction you want it to. If we click on motion directional, we can change it to hotspots or path. Now hotspots is a cool one because that gives you all these little hotspots on screen. We can choose the amount of hotspots that we have. So let's just go with three, and then on screen, if we click the little star in the middle, we can move the hotspot around. If we click on the outside circle and drag, we can make them smaller or bigger so we can get all of these little hotspots wherever we want them. Now, real quick tip, if you make your hotspots too small, so I'm gonna make these really small and then hit play, it's not actually gonna finish in time. Underneath your progression here in the inspector, you've got adjust timing, and then you can adjust the start and end amount. So what I would do is put my playhead right at the end of this transition so we can see the end point. And then if we adjust the end up, so it just finishes covering the whole screen. So for me, it's 1.6. And then if we hit play, it will be big enough to cover the entire screen and complete our transition, which just gives you even more scope to have some fun with it. If we change the motion once more to path, very similar, but we've got two stars and a line, and we can just choose the path that our burn away is going to take. So if we hit play, we've got this line transition. Again, we've got number of points, so let's go with three. And now we get an additional start in the middle. And we can make this do something funky like this, and it's just gonna whip round like so. Now, if we keep scrolling down, we've got things like edge and appearance. So we can change the raggedness of the edge. We can change the scale of the edge to give it sort of a finer fire effect or a much bigger effect, just have a play with those. And then lastly, we've got appearance. So we've got melt. This is this sort of burning effect which you have on their image. So if we just lower this down, you see there's less distortion. Increase that, we've got much more of this fire haze distortion effect. We've also then got the char, which is our black areas. We can change the color. We've got the burn, which is our little burn area here. We can change the actual burn amount as well as changing the hue. If you change this to a nice sort of blue, you get a much more sort of electrical style effect, which I think looks kind of cool. You've then also got your burn brightness and then you've got your glow brightness, which is just the glow amount of the blur. Last but not least, you've got ash, which you can increase so you get these black sort of particle effects going on. And again, you can change the color of the ash if you need to. 
have some fun with this. I think it's really cool. You can do loads of fun stuff with the burn away transition. And that's it for this one. Hope you enjoyed it. What are you going to do with those fun transitions? Let me know down in the comment section below. Thanks for watching. Take it easy. I'll catch you next time. See ya.